afternoon everybody and thank you for joining today's webinar, Assertive Conversation Skills. My name is Sarah Gonzalez, I am an employee of Redback Conferencing and your facilitator for today's session. So today is all about assertiveness and useful techniques to tackle unhelpful behaviour within your workplace. So before we get started, I just want to go through a few rules for newcomers and those of you who haven't joined a Redback Conference. The webinar will be in listen-only mode, so this means if you do wish to ask a question or communicate with either the presenter or myself, simply type into the messages box which is located in the bottom right corner of the screen. Also, do keep in mind that the session is being recorded and upon completion of a satisfaction survey, you will receive an email within 48 hours containing a link to the recording. And also just to note that if you do experience any issues in hearing the sound coming from your computer, to please feel free to listen to the webinar through your telephone. So if you take a quick look into the messages box on the bottom right corner, you will find there's a 1800 toll free number and also a passcode. Simply enter that, follow the prompts and you'll be able to listen through your telephone. So before I pass the microphone on to Yvonne, I'd just like to give her a brief introduction as I'm sure she's going to inspire you all. So Yvonne exudes her passion in enabling others to be more assertive. She has over 20 years of experience teaching within the corporate world of advertising, sales, as well as management. She has worked with a number of large organisations such as News Limited and Fairfax Media. She runs Madison Training, an inspirational, experimental and fun-filled learning and development program. Madison Training specialises in people skills to produce profitable knowledge to generate profitable relationships. So before we start off and we hand over to Yvonne, I just want to get you all familiar with the technology and how to use the messages box. So if you can all just type into the bottom right hand corner where you're actually joining from today and what the weather's like. And I'll just make some of you jealous by letting you know that we're in Sydney at the moment and the weather is absolutely stunning outside. So there we go, we've got people joining from Canberra as well. North Sydney, so that's not far from us. Melbourne's nice as well. There we go. 24 in Hobart. <laughs> there we go. Melbourne's actually hotter than Sydney today. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so before we do get started, just a brief overview of what we're going to actually cover today. So the importance of assertive conversations is something that we all want to know about, otherwise we wouldn't have registered for the webinar today. We're also going to see how assertive conversations can benefit all involved, as well as learning how to build great relationships and business success. And I bet there's a few people out, know, out there who would love to know more about that. Um, and then finally, we're going to get some ideas and tips and techniques that you can use and hopefully take away an employee within your workforce today. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Yvonne and Thank she you. can get started. Thank you, Sarah, and welcome, everybody. So um, a set of conversations, uh, the ingredients, so there's at least nine ingredients that you can see there. And our focus today is really on the techniques, but I wanted to give you the big picture to start with. And uh, so we, for a set of conversations, and we'll come to exactly what that is shortly, um, we do need to plan and prepare. So in fact, is that something that you actually do? And, and why do we need to do that? So the right people are there at the meeting. And so to give you confidence, we need to get everyone's cooperation and buy-in. Um, in an ideal world, um, because assertiveness is all about um, expressing um, and advocacy and speaking up, as well as empathy, and um, all within an umbrella of respect, um, we do all need to be prepared to, to speak up. Uh, ideally, we'll have an outcome that we're working towards, but we may need to be a bit flexible there, which is the next one. And empathy, we do really, um, prior to the conversation, especially if it's uh, an important conversation around unhelpful behaviours, it's a really good idea to look into the shoes or step into the shoes rather and look through the eyes of the other people who are there so that then you can obviously come to an outcome or think of an outcome that will be um, a win-win for everybody. We absolutely need to be focused. Uh, we do ideally need to um, exemplify, if you like, leadership and grace. And that's a, an interesting thing, I think, to put in there. Um, 
it, it, the, the grace is around the respect for all the people involved, and it's great actually if everybody has a different point of view. There's a kind of nice reframe. And then, well, then we actually come to the techniques, which is what uh, actually the focus of this webinar. So, what are assertive conversations? Assertive convers oh, a conversation is what do you think it is? It's a two-way. Uh, it's two-way. It's depending on the type of conversation. It can be 50-50, and um, it's where it comes from the position of mutual respect and valuing yourself to speak up and being able to hear and understand and comprehend and appreciate the other's point of view without necessarily agreeing. And why are they increasingly important? Uh, again, that's a very good question, isn't it? And some of these questions actually came from your, your uh, questionnaires when you said what you wanted to get out of this webinar. Um, they're increasingly important because there is so much um, uh, aggressiveness, unhelpful behaviours. Uh, people are so that if everybody had these skills, which are which are practical and one can learn them, because the key is actually practice them to get good, um, it would make a huge difference uh, to the world. And um, old ways versus new ways. Um, well, so the old ways, you know, of in the past, you know, command and control, and you will do this really totally out the window. The new way is build relationships, understand each other, cooperate, and, and sort of that, that is our focus. That's the focus for success, really. So before we get further, I, I, I wanted to do a poll because it would be interesting to see um, what is your perhaps uh, default behavior that might be the thing. And Sarah, thank you for that. So, um, hopefully this doesn't happen, but let's say the boss is yelling at you. Um, what is your immediate reaction? So, do you, do you yell back? <laughs> <laughs> do you grit your teeth and say nothing? Do you just take it for the moment? Or do you give a calm, resourceful response? This is actually what you do, not what you'd like. <laughs> if anyone has anything else that they yes. might do as well, yes. free, free, feel free to type that into the messages box. We'd love to hear mm. some other responses that come out. That would be good. What are some other common ones that you hear quite regularly, Yvonne? Uh, well, actually, I mean, those are the the, the main the main tips, if you yeah. like, of of it. Um, I mean, yeah, I would actually say that ev most answers will fall into the, one mm -hmm. of those four buckets, which you probably you can guess is, is um, aggressive, passive aggressive, um, mm. passive and assertive. Ah, okay. Yeah. Bert is saying that she laughs, so that might be another way to deal with it. Well, I think, I, oh, I love laughter. Laughter diffuses tension and humour, laughter, is one of the best, absolutely the best strategies in an assertive conversation. Um, if you can get everybody to laugh at the start of the meeting, then everybody actually has endorphins running through their system are natural happy drugs so we feel good mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful thing to do so not all of us are joke tellers about american research actually says about about 90 no about two percent yes two percent of people can tell jokes but 98 percent or more have a sense of humor so mm -hmm. yes so get everybody to laugh there's oh. the responses okay so okay so so two percent um would be aggressive, fall um, into the aggressive bucket. Passive aggressive, you know, you say nothing, 18%, uh, 33 just take it for the moment, which is more passive behavior. And um, calm, resourceful, responsive, assertive. Thank you, thank you. And of course, you know, it depends. Those of you who know me, and there are many on the webinar who do, you know, they'll know that it depends on one of my two favorite words in the English language, because it depends on the situation, um, the, the culture, where you are, the people, the mood, whatever. So, so yes, yeah, so it may be that, that you, you could be capable of all four responses on different occasions. So I was asking you for the most common one. And it brings us to another poll. Again, this, this is three polls, and, and the really thing is to, is to uh, uh, ideally actually help me understand the level. So this, this one is your knowledge of assertive skills. So um, 
One is poor, three is okay, five is excellent. So what is your knowledge already? Mm. And we've got the responses coming through now. Lovely. <clears throat> lovely, lovely. Excellent. I'll just hey. close the yes. poll and share those results with you, Yvonne. Yes, there we go. Ah, okay. So 13, 4, 10, okay, 35. Good. So I do a fair amount of work with Toyota, and we have Kaizen. <laughs> so my idea would be by the end of the webinar, um, if I asked you to do that, I would hope you could Kaizen your response and, uh, in, and, and move it up, move it up. Hmm. So if you're if you're on a a, a one maybe you could um, get up to a one and a half or a two or even a, maybe a three. Anyway, just I'm putting the thought out there. Hmm. So thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so last oh. one. Oh, I think I've just. <laughs> so I'll just go back. Sorry. So how well do you use your assertive skills? Because it's all very well to know them, but you know, often often we know what to do, but but actually we don't we don't follow through. We don't we don't do it. So this is an honest, not where you'd like to be. But do you actually use the skills that you've got? Mm. So if you haven't many skills, now that's interesting, isn't it? You might actually use what you have very well. So this could be open to interpretation. <laughs> Excellent. And we've got two answers which are looking quite similar with the amount of percentages so far. So once again, thank you for your responses. We're now going to close that and share the results. There we go. Okay. So 24% not very well. So um, ideally, um, at the end of the seminar, at the, seminar, the end of the webinar, um, you, will, uh, you will have, again, um, perhaps polished some of the skills, learned some new skills and techniques, so again, that if we we're not going to do it, but if we did, that you could actually say that again you've kaizen that so you've got an improvement, and so eleven is a somewhat uh, somewhat well, yeah, extremely well a couple too. So I don't know where we're going to go with you. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Maybe you know. There's no such thing as perfection. This mm -hmm. is excellent. So here we go. So. I love this model for assertive behavior. Assertive behavior, in a nutshell, is on one hand, you have advocacy, which is the ability to speak up, ideally for yourself, and express what you need and what you think. We have a right to be able to do that. And advocacy also implies that you will speak up for other people too. Um, if needed, and in fact, so in the workplace, it may be whether you're a leader or not, the fact is that you could um, extend your influence and uh, support through this kind of advocacy side of assertive behavior. Now, the other thing is it's balance, and so we can see we've got the balance between the speaking up and also empathy, which is absolutely the right for the other person mm -hmm. or the other people to also be able to speak their truth, to speak up, and to be heard. So this is what in the assertive conversation, that is actually happening. Both sides are being able to speak their truth, to speak what's important to them, how they feel, what they want, and also to have, to be heard. And the respect is, if you like, the umbrella. So that's the umbrella over all of it. And what happens is when respect goes, that's when the conversations can get unhelpful. And it's like, what do you need to do to get that respect back? And it's to respecting, obviously, it's both sides. So actually, that's a, it's a good question. What do you need to do to get that back? And it's look for the good in you and look for the good, something that you like in that other person so that you will then that will come across, if you like, on an energetic level. So it's all actually about you. It's all about you. Your thoughts and beliefs, 
your physiology, that's what you do with your body and your gestures. Your emotions and your language, which is the words that you use and the tone that you deliver them in. And the aim, the aim is to get you resourceful. We want a resourceful you. If you are resourceful, you will have a positive thought, which will have positive physiology, which will have positive emotions, and therefore you'll speak positive language. The beauty of this model, I think, is A, its simplicity. It's two, got you at the center. And the other wonderful thing is you can start anywhere. So you can actually start, and if you change your physiology, so for example, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go off camera. So if you stand up, <laughs> If you actually stand up and look up and smile, your whole physiology to do it. Yes, that's right, Sarah. Well done. You do it. Your whole physiology actually impacts all of the other three. And physiology actually is a is a, is a really um, good place to start. So it's what, what what are you doing with your body that will set off an upward spiral? So that um, when your physiology is up and so the endorphins start to kick in, you change your biochemistry, your emotions change so you're more positive, and your language and tone is therefore mm -hmm. more positive. And you'll notice when you smile, if you smile, uh, if you speak with a smile or answer the phone with a smile, it's a very different tone to, oh, well, I'll do it, hello, <laughs> oh, welcome to Madison Training, this is Yvonne, or welcome to Madison Training. This is Yvonne. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Though. But it's very different. Uh, and so what we do with our physiology will also affect the way the language comes out. And then, of course, it can affect our thoughts and beliefs. And Or you can start with your thoughts, or you can start with your language, or you can start with your emotions. But, but the aim uh, is for an assert, a really a quality assertive conversation would be to have you both very resourceful, you know, going back to the big picture, have those nine things in place and um, start yourself on this upward spiral of physiology, thoughts, emotions, and language. Okay, well, this webinar is actually about unhelpful behavior. I just want to uh, just spend a tiny little bit of time. This uh, is actually a slide from um, one of my sexual harassment and bullying workshops and things. So this, this aggressive behavior, um, it can be physical, verbal, you can read that. There's many sorts of it. The bottom line, of course, it's extremely unhelpful. But the other thing, it's actually illegal. So aggressive behavior is illegal. And whether you're the manager, um, the team leader, or somebody who's witnesses, there are consequences. Um, you know, financial consequences potentially um, through the legal system, but also, you know, huge consequences through lost productivity, um, feeling unsafe, um, not coming to work, uh, perhaps potentially losing your job or leaving your job. So, uh, with the so the physical is obviously, you know, somebody throwing something at you. The verbal would, could be shouting if somebody um, takes your mail and trashes it in the bin or, you know, withholds information that, you know, you need for that report, or intimidates or harasses you, that is, of course, extremely unhelpful. I just wanted to point out that that is against the law, and that's probably another Redback conference these days. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's other sorts of behavior that's not aggressive, but that is needed in the workplace. Um, and sometimes can be interpreted as not helpful. So, you know, it, but it depends. So, for example, you know, difference of opinion or different points of view are very valid. Um, I don't know who said this, and I love it. It's if you and I are totally the same and we agree on everything, <laughs> one of us is redundant. <laughs> So, you know, healthy, there's healthy different points of view um, and also the ability to respect the other's point of view. And again, if you are resourceful in yourself, you'll be able to do that. Of course, there are things like poor management practices. So this could be where, so rosters um, are mismanaged. Um, our could be, 
a poor management practice could be you're left out of being invited to the meeting. Now, if that obviously happened a lot, it could be interpreted as um, bullying. Um, but it could be an accident or it could be because of the systems are down. And, of course, performance management is an integral part of, of the workplace. I mean, we, we need to know when we've done a good job or an excellent job and also when our performance is under par. So to have a, a, a conversation around that that is respectful is, again, very important. So um, there's different sorts of behavior there. So just, oh, just move to the next slide. Ah, I've gone back. Okay. Here we go. Forward. <laughs> and forward. Yeah. There you go. So so we're back. So, okay, so we're going to look at the, the seventh webinar <laughs> is going to focus on these four areas. So I suspect we have about, we probably have about eight minutes on each of these. Now, at the end of each of the four, we'll take questions. So let's let's go. Let's go. Let's start. We could start anywhere, but let's start with your thoughts and beliefs. Okay. Uh, for each, I'm going to give you about three tools and techniques. Mm -hmm. So w with our thoughts and beliefs, um, ideally, the, the more positive we can make our thoughts and beliefs, the, the better it will serve us. Um, so actually, how do we do it? Well, what we do is we perhaps get resourceful, so our physiology kicks in, and instead of thinking, oh, like, poor me, oh, oh this, oh, you know, the outcome, oh, it's going to be awful, it's like, how can you, again, the physiology of looking up and smile might help you in terms of, uh, so what's good about this? How, how can we make this meeting the best? What do we need to do? Um, what's good about this other person? Um, so positive, positive thoughts lead, as we'll see, to positive language. A key also in being assertive is number two here, which is actually separate the person from the behavior. So, for example, if the behavior is unhelpful, you know, in what way? Well, it could be that the behavior is idiotic, in which case, you know, if you were being aggressive, you would say, you idiot! <laughs> uh, which is not really very helpful. Um, and if you were assertive and you actually got yourself resourceful and you separated the person from behavior, you could then actually say, um, you could respect the person and just say, uh, that behavior is unacceptable. Again, you would probably not want to label it idiotic. <laughs> so you might be tempted. The thing, though, with our mind is, if we're thinking it, so if we are actually thinking, idiot, it's going to leak. So we do need to get our thoughts under control. And again, awareness is one of the keys. Um, in, in my workshops and things, for people who have a lot of negative behavior, or, or, as a result of negative thoughts, a lot of negative thoughts, and uh, scientists say that we talk to ourselves how many times a day, I wonder? I might ask you to think about that. They actually say 64,000 times a day we are talking to ourselves. It's like a running commentary. Now, a, a question. Is other, is other thoughts the same as they were yesterday and the day before and the day before? And are they negative or positive? I really do hope that your thoughts are positive because we have to get what we expect. So for those of you who know that your thinking can be very critical, you can be more of a pessimist, um, one of the ways to do it is to actually put a rubber band on your wrist for as long as you want, but a day is often enough. And every time you have a negative thought, you just ping it. <laughs> of course, it, it hurts a little, not, you know, not too much, but that is your trigger to actually change your thought to something more empowering, something more positive. And it actually, it really does work. So you could be flicking yourself 64,000 yes. times a day, potentially. <laughs> well, I hope not. I hope not. Look, you're a masochist. 
see, hopefully we learn. Yes, we, we would learn, you know, after, after 10 times. <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it actually does work. So, the, um, so negative to positive, separate the person from the he- behavior, and then use perceptual positions. So we could spend hours on this. So um, you, you do, I hope you do realize that you're getting the really fast track version. <laughs> the fast track version. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, an assertive person will use perceptual positions. I would probably use it every day and many times, several times a day. First position is all about me. So, what do I want? What do I need? What's my outcome? I really need to know that. Of course, if you get tied up in aggressive behavior, that's where you stay. It's like, this is what I need. You know, do this for me. You know, it's, so we need to be able to balance that with the empathy. So, you know, the first decision is advocacy, but taken to too great a level, it's aggressiveness. So we need to balance our needs with understanding the needs of the other person, which is second position. So as metaphorically, or, or you can even do this, put their shoes on. <laughs> if, you, if you walk in their shoes, you know, and look through their eyes, you'll have more understanding. And again, that's really crucial to understand what the other person wants again it's it's very respectful and then obviously in your discussion you can talk about it now if you are and some people who are timid or passive spend all their time in second position and if you spend it there um, well you'll be a bit of a doormat you know you'll be walked over and you need to rise up (laughs) and be able to stand up and speak up and actually balance the two, because empathy is a wonderful thing, but you also need self-love, empathy for yourself as well. So um, so there's the classic first position taken to an extreme is aggressive, unacceptable. Passive, not very acceptable either. Um, and so there is a third position, which I like to call the helicopter. And the helicopter means I can, I can take the helicopter as high as I like, to be disassociated from the feeling that I could have in first and second position. And up there in the helicopter, I can get resourceful, even more resourceful. I can think of options and ideas and then test them, you know, back to first. Is is that going to work for me? Is that a win for me? Test them for second. Is that a win for them? Because the aim in assertive um, conversations would be to have a win-win as the outcome. So all, ideally all needs are met and we'll actually come shortly to a really good technique to do that, a really practical one. So, so thoughts and beliefs? Any questions? No questions coming through yet so far. Um, but we were asking, first of all, if anyone does ex- currently experience any non-aggressive behaviour in the workplace, and um, Paola said that yes, to some degree. Do you, um, from your experience in your work and obviously your training, do you find that um, non-aggressive behaviour happens a lot more than the aggressive behaviour because it's sort of hidden beneath? It pro- you're probably right, yeah. actually. You're, pr- you're probably right because um, a sort of... Uh, aggressive behavior is out there Mm -hmm. in the face it's a toxic culture it can be seen Um, and you know on the passive side well in some respects you know they tend to go together because you've got the victim and the bully Mm. you know so so it's it's like you know mm, I I would hazard a guess Mm -hmm. that you, it, there probably is more passivity, actually. Yeah. I think that intuitively that kind of feels right. Um, I'm not sure of any uh, research, although actually there was some research just done recently by the Australian Institute of Workplace Behaviour, um, and they interviewed 21,000 people in Australia who had been bullied or harassed, and um, they said something like, of their results, 84% of People who witnessed bullying did nothing. Mm. Just did nothing, and did nothing, and also felt that the organisation couldn't do anything for them either. Just helpless. Just helpless. Mm. That's right. Um, and then only two percent of cases were resolved mm. by litigation. And the other interesting statistic was a third is absolutely not um, not reported wow. of, of, of bullying because. And why is that? It's generally speaking because they don't believe that the culture will do anything about it. 
So Hopefully, with a lot of the media attention, though, um, that statistic might change. Um, and that's actually current. That's this year. Oh. Th that is this year. Yeah. But I agree with you. Um, it's much more prevalent. And of course, armed with assertive conversation skills or assertive skills just generally, it gives you the confidence to stand up mm. to to bullies. Um, just on the one, two, three grid there, um, Dean has asked, is the third position like looking at what the business needs common to both um, in the conversation? So taking more of a bird's eye approach and seeing what the business's corporate or strategic goals are and then yeah. working on that? Is yeah, that that's, okay. that's good. Um, yes, yeah. so there's two ways to look at that. You can either look... So if it's a if it's a workplace meeting, so there can be you and I, Sarah, yep. we, can, we can view the... Red back, yep. if you like, as a as an entity in itself, mm -hmm. as an as another person, and then we can also go into the helicopter um, and get ideas for all of us. Okay. For all of us. So it can be interpreted in both ways. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So we might uh, move on to our physiology. I love this. <laughs> oh, I've already demonstrated some of it. Um, open body language you know the aggressiveness of this is what you will do <laughs> it's like is um it's not productive it's not helpful it may get you a very short-term win but people will under undermine you it is accept unacceptable it is against the law um and then of course the body the body and the physiology of timid is you actually want to make yourself as small as possible and so, you know, everything is, you know, it's like I don't have the right to speak up or I don't have the courage. So what we need to do is, and if we change our, what we do with our body so that we are, for example, I hope, put, put your feet flat on the floor. <laughs> put your feet flat on the floor. You're grounded. <sighs> breathe. I need to do more of that. We need to breathe. So breathe in. <sighs> you know, even if you just breathe in three times, Three deep breaths. It will, it will reset your biochemistry to something that is more resourceful. So an open body language. Researchers said, although if you can see this, I don't know, but, but crossing your arms um, is actually quite comfortable. And you could also, if you were cold, you would cross your arms. But what is the truth from the scientific research says that you're 47% less likely to take in the message. So we, we do we do need to open up, whether or not we, we like it or not, and this is like our, you know, it is comfortable and we are protecting our solar plexus here. We need to have the courage, and courage actually is a big thing about assertiveness, I reckon, to, to value yourself and speak up and have that open body language to be centered and, in fact, to breathe. So I might, um, I might, leave physiology mm. as that because we've already done the look up and smile and smiling you know is oh if there was if there was just one one thing that you could do physiologically it would actually be that so i invite you to uh, smile at everybody it, and if you think oh God, i can't do that <laughs> like, like, try it for an hour try it on the bus you know, like yawning, actually smiling is contagious. Mm. And you know how, you know, this is why this model, it's all about you. It's all about you. And we cannot change anybody really but ourselves. However, however, when we smile and therefore you smile back, it only takes two seconds to your endorphins to kick in. And effectively you have helped them, the other person, and change their physiology. Mm. So what can you do at the start of a meeting? You know, get everybody to share some, some good experience that's happened today or in the last week. That approach is actually called appreciative inquiry. It's, it's getting everybody to be positive. Many of you uh, who know me, I use cross-call. And Sarah will tell you how we're doing cross-call, which is using kinesiology to actually integrate the two brains. Five minutes before yeah. the... Yeah, even looked like she was doing karate for those of you who are trying to picture it. Um, but it seems to have worked. It did. It, it, it does work. It does work. And I, I, I encourage everybody at the start of a conversation, assertive conversation, which could be potentially challenging, that you actually do something like that. The other thing is everybody laughs. And again, you know, endorphins produced in the mind and in your gut. And then you flood the system. So 
There we go. I just wonder if there are any questions around it, what you can do more positively around your physiology. Don't seem to be any questions on this topic so far, so we'll move on to the next one. Indeed. Okay, so um, we could spend hours on this. <laughs> we won't. Uh, again, fast track version. Uh, it's the language. Now, the language, obviously, is the actual words that we use and the tone of our voice. And I've already illustrated how it can change when you put a smile on your face. The tone of your voice changes. So we can say exactly the same words um, and how we how we sound can be so different. So I mean, a simple one um, is is um, let's see. I like your report. I like the report that you just handed in. So you could say I like the report, <laughs> or you could say I like the report, or you could say you know I like the report you just handed in. It's only two pages and it's succinct and it's straight to the point. So again, you've got the different, again, what, what we've incorporated into all of that is, is our physiology, our mental state, actually our emotions as well, which we'll come to next. Um, I statements are, are key. They're like in the top three for assertive skills. We, for many of uh, you who perhaps have a background in sales, and, and I do have, we're taught to say you a lot. You know, what's important for you? It's that empathy. What do you need? How can I tailor what I've got to what you need? And, of course, that's, that's one half of the equation. The other thing, especially, you know, when we're dealing with unacceptable behavior, or even in sales when you actually want um, the person to buy what you're selling, um, it's I statements. Um, and the thing about I statements, such as, you know, I need, I want, I'd like, I feel. I noticed is another nice one. I noticed, you know, you 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 don't seem to be yourself today. Uh, what what's going on? And um, they're clear, they're direct, and they're honest. Clear, direct, and honest. I statement. Sometimes uh, you'll hear people say, everybody. Everybody does this, or everybody feels. Well, we actually don't know. We actually don't know what everybody feels. However, we can take ownership of I, of I feel. I feel upset when, when you're late. And what I'd like is, I'd like us both to be here at 8 o'clock in the morning, as promised. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel, I need, I'd like... Um, and, the, and the thing is, if we go too overboard with the I, then it's all about me, which is not very helpful. So we do need to have that balance. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the sort of conversation would go, um, I'd, like, I'd like to listen to, to what you have to say, to your point of view about the presentation, about the report, about what just happened. So you, you know, respectfully invite the other person to speak. And, of course, uh, we, we actually do need to listen. Listening's coming up very shortly as well when we actually come and we put it all together. Um, so we do need to listen. And then having listened and reflected back so the other person's heard, we can then, it's our turn. And that's it. It's about taking turns and being present for each other. Uh, the other thing is, is the actual words. Uh, And this is 
like some of the basics. And the other word is to please remove is don't. You know, don't be late. Don't walk on the grass. Don't do that again. Don't touch that. And um, all of those, because our, our mind, we come back here, see, it's all linked. Because our mind, our subconscious mind, thinks in pictures and doesn't understand don't. Um, it pictures being late. It, it pictures walking on the grass. Um, and we need to actually get really clear on what we do want. So we do want people to be on time. Mm. We do want them to walk on the footpath. We do want them to um, get that report in before the deadline. Just on that, um, yeah. Yvonne, um, there was a little glitch in the internet um, a few seconds ago. And just the last few seconds of the but information, if you could just go back and repeat that for us. Okay. Apologies for that, everybody. Just okay. a little glitch with the internet connection. Okay, Time sure. Technology. Uh huh. So, okay, so basically but goes and however if we were going to the advanced level then I might suggest that there are occasions when but could could still be in your vocabulary if you actually said something negative to somebody um, um, and said okay so that report was no good but <laughs> that then negates the negative and then you could move on to the positive but if so a negative plus negative is a positive but you know really it's much simpler I think just to go and and if any of you've done any improv it's all about accepting what's given and building on it which is beautiful so um, in terms of uh, language we can we can look at um, the but the don't the and I'm just wondering oh yes ah next one this is really important and I've alluded to it already, take turns to actively listen and then reflect back before you go on. And there's a wonderful, there's a, some wonderful words here. And I, I really have used these in, in challenging situations where people's perceptions, which you know, brings back to the mind, people's perceptions are so different about what happened. Um, so much so that there you know, is, is a lot of conflict and you know, relationships can break up or people could lose their jobs or you know, somebody's at the end of their tether. And, and I love it because it's actually, again, it's really simple. I see it differently from you. Again, delivered, you know, feet flat on the floor, very assertively. I see it differently from you. Would you be willing to search for a solution better than either one of us may propose? Now, of course, they might say, no, no, I'm not going to. This is just go. <laughs> oh, you've got to all take a deep breath. <sighs> Breathe. And if they said yes, this is it. So no one can make their point of view until they've restated the other person's point of view to their satisfaction. And so it might be, Sarah, I listen to you. and come to listening momentarily. So I'm actively listening to you. And... And I'm at, for me, I would need to take notes, just, just a few brief notes so I really get it, so I can reflect back what the facts are and what the feelings are, maybe what your perceptions are, so that you know that I've heard you. And then you can say, no, I didn't mean that. That's not what I said. Because, this is a beautiful phrase, I can never tell you what you said. I can only tell you what I heard. And, and it's, it's the truth. Um, you know, and this is why there are conflicts in the world and everywhere, because people people hear words but interpret them totally differently to what goes mm -hmm. on in the mind. So that's um, that's a very uh, beautiful technique, and and as I say, it it really uh, produces really good results that actually are better than either side could probably come up. So it's a real, real win-win rather than say a compromise. So, um, are there any questions around language? Because we've got emotions coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> um, just going back to um, the more visual side of things that you spoke about mm -hmm. earlier, um, and Rebecca has asked, so if someone doesn't smile back at you when you are using ah. that smiling technique, what is the best approach to take to that? Okay, um, so, some people, um, so some people don't, and some people won't smile back, but most people will. Um, so it's like, get over it. 
you know, it just get over it. It's nothing to do with you. There's all sorts of things. They could have forgotten to put their contact lenses in so they can't actually see you. <laughs> no, they they could be so um, inside the 64,000 thoughts that are going on in their head that, again, they just don't see you. So it's just like get over it. It's really nothing to do with you. Focus on you feeling good and, like, move on and smile at the next person. Andrea exactly said yeah. that pretty much to mm. keep smiling and it's their problem um, yeah. if they want to be miserable or maybe, like you said, they may have some other things going on. Mm. Um, so Caroline has asked a question and I think um, you may or may not like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think you're going to have life. to actually get up and show people what you did. Oh, so oh. what was the physical thing you did before your presentation <laughs> to get yourself in the right state of mind when you're talking about physiology? So it's okay, I can shine. I can do it. I'm just wondering how oh, can you see this? Yes. So this is this is the simplest way. It's called cross crawl. Mm -hmm. So so you're lifting your legs. You lift your legs. The, the key is when your hand goes over your body to the other side, what's happening is the neurons are firing through the corpus callosum. Um, and so therefore, the left logical brain is talking to the right creative brain. The neurons are firing. So in effect, you've got the two working together. It's, it's kinesiology. So it's cross crawl. That's a simple way. And then there is an advanced way, but we, we, we might. Uh, well, if you can just see, it's a bit more, it's, it's hand to nose and cross over to the ear as you kind of bounce up and down. So you can probably see that. <laughs> so it's more, it's like, a, for those of you who don't have access to the video, your right arm to your left leg, almost like yes. a slow nut bush, would you say? Yes. How nice, how nice. <laughs> well done, Sarah. Yes. Good. Thank you for that. Caroline seems impressed. Oh, well. so it looks good. quite relaxing. For, for those on the webinar who who know me and have been in my training and workshops, <laughs> will know will know that that's nearly always how I start. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jean Jean or Jean, sorry, has asked a question as well. So, if someone hears the words and interprets it negatively, mm. how do you bring them back to explain to them every time that what you really mean? in a positive way since they've already heard, already have a neg negative perception of you? Oh, okay, so if I just, so if I just can clarify that. Um, so so if, let's say if we role played it with you and I, mm -hmm. Sarah, so um, you have a negative perception of, of something that I've done, mm. okay? I, I, Whoever, I wonder if they could clarify. Okay, so yeah. um, from what I'm getting from this, if someone hears words, and you know how different people obviously interpret yeah. different thoughts negatively, yeah. how do you then bring them back and sort of backtrack, I guess, and explain to them oh. what you really mean is supposed to be positive, but they've already got that original negative perception of you. How do you, how do you change that, and do you just keep talking? Do you try and separate the person from the behaviour? How does that well, usually... Well, I mean, that, that's the key, is actually yeah. separate the person's behaviour. So it, it could be that... Like it's a bit like they're criticizing you and they just don't get you or they don't get what what you say so absolutely so separate the person from the behavior you know really get sent to them and present breathe and then I would actually start to ask questions that's another thing that hasn't really come up much yet in the in the language it's I'm so glad it has how and what questions so I might sort of say uh, to somebody uh, who, so I'd invite. So let's mm. say so. I invited you to to reflect back on on the report that I wanted you to write for me, um, and 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 you said, uh, oh, I don't want to do it that way or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, what I might actually, it depends. Here we come back to it depends. You know my favourite words. Um, Depends how long I've known you, what, what I know your style, but respectfully, I could say, well, how would you like this to be? Mm -hmm. So I, I would actually put on my uh, grounded, assertive, listening hat and probe, probably not probe, but just clarify. So what's happening here? It could be like that. What's mm -hmm. happening here? This is what I'm saying and doing. And it sounds like, again, we're going to go different senses, it sounds like or it looks like or it feels like um, your interpretation is different to mine. Mm. So we need to work on this. Yep. So it's, again, it's, it's being cool, 
calm, mm -hmm. professional, balanced, respectful. You know, those are those are the and resourceful. Mm -hmm. We put all of that together. I believe actually, if we do, we can handle anything, mm -hmm. any sort of behaviour. And there are times when, oh, we're going to get onto emotions now. Just quickly on that as well, just a comment yeah. from Tracy, and this is probably an entirely different topic altogether. <laughs> you could probably do an entire webinar on this, um, in that emails can easy, easily be yeah. interpreted in the wrong way. So written behaviour is completely different, isn't it? And it's so hard to get that right, yeah. I'm assuming. Absolutely, absolutely. And yes, in fact, some research was done by Nichols and Stevens, and what they, they found that 75% um, of face-to-face -face communication is misunderstood, ignored, or forgotten. Now that's face to face. Mm. That's appalling when you think about it. Mm. Again, if we could, if we could assertively um, ask for, you know, um, could you repeat back mm. uh, what I said? You know, I'll reflect back. Um, it's just so. If that, if it's seventy-five percent for face to face, mm. what is it going to be over the phone? Even higher. Email even higher. It's, it's like, please, please, if you've got um, unhelpful behaviours to handle, please have a face to face. Because if you do it with, it with email, it can be so more misunderstood. Because there's no tone, there's no gestures, you know, to 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 look at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, we do have a few yeah. more questions coming through, but I think we'll continue on to the next question yeah. before we open up the entire question. Pack. That's right. So I've got emotions, and then a couple more things, and then we can have uh, some more questions. So you know, the fourth thing. So you know, so it's all linked: our mind, our language, our physiology, and our emotions. And we can start anywhere in the circle. And and actually, again, the idea is to get something positive. So we start an upward positive cycle. So in terms of emotions, and you notice for each of the, the three areas, in, in a one-hour webinar, I'm just kind of giving you three three uh, nuggets, nuggets of gold. <laughs> so emotions, first of all, they're so important and acknowledge them. So we need to, you know, and this is where it, it ties in with the language and the thoughts. You know, I feel upset. Now, I can say I feel upset assertively without either bursting into tears or, or smacking you in the face. <laughs> so, and, and the first step is to acknowledge and accept that's what we're feeling. Because when once we do that, we can then move on. Um, and, in fact, um, we can actually then, the third one is to actually transform that language, that, that, that our emotions, we'll come to that in a minute, that widen the gap is is a, is a wonderful technique. So, uh, when something happens, like somebody does something, so so again, so they're late or they've um, disappointed you or they've some some way been unhelpful. What can happen depending on our state is we can have um, I don't know if you can do it, a knee jerk reaction. I'm just moving back. So I'm tapping the patella of my knee and what happens is the knee is just react. Mm. And this this is what this is unhelpful. So if face is unhelpful behaviour, we can we can get into a cycle of, you know, you know, why do you always do this? Or, you know, it's like, oh it's like breathe, get yourself resourceful and it's a technique called widen the gap. And widen the gap is so here is the event. What we need to do is put some space between the event and our response. So a knee-jerk reaction is it's just, you know, we just, mm. you know, we just shout back, or we dissolve into tears. Um, we need to widen the gap. So this is so we can bring our emotions under control. But of course, it's also linked to our mind. It, it, it's helpful with what we do with our physiology as well. So we, so in widening the gap. We can count to ten. We can breathe. We can go to the helicopter. And all of that will actually help us um, handle our emotions a lot better. Um, and I'm just looking at the time. Um, I, I, this is quite important, so I might just show it. Um, so I, it's, um, Dr. Siegel came up with the concept of our brains. Okay, Actually, I'm now integrating. I might actually... Um, just move on a, 
just a bit because we've only got five minutes left. Um, so in terms of putting it all together, okay. Um, Dr. Siegel said, think of your mind, and you can Google him. Um, this, this is our brain stem. This is our reptilian brain. This is our, uh, our cortex and our prefrontal cortex. Now what happens is when under stress, we flip. Under stress, because our, inside our brain we've got amygdala who are on the alert for anything that makes us feel uncomfortable, um, not safe. It's con they're constantly, they're little almond shapes. They're constantly looking out for danger, danger, danger. As soon as they see danger, 0.2 seconds, they fire the, 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 um, to the hypothalamus and then you've got the fight flight syndrome kicking in. So the so fighting is aggressiveness, obviously. The, the, you've got passive aggressive, you know, you freeze or you can, you know, or run away. So what happens is we need to recognize um, that if somebody has flipped, um, so the emotions are raw, just by breathing three times deeply or counting one to ten actually helps the um, prefrontal cortex come back online. And this is our rational brain. This is our logical brain. And this allows us to handle things, you know, calmly and coolly. What we need to do is recognize when we're about to flip or before we're about to flip and take time out or go for a walk. Breathe so that we are resourceful. And I just think that's such a very simple, mm -hmm. such a powerful thing. And so that integrates our mind. It integrates the emotions. We need we need our prefrontal cortex to come online and actually help us be this cool professional self that we can be. And then, of course, the the physiology of that, you know, and the language are also all linked. And to listen, we need to be present to the other person. So there's our mind. We need the language. Actually, we need to shut up. <laughs> That's the first thing if we want to listen. And then the physiology of listening is, is it's like, yes, it could be like a tilted head, or it could be, yes, tell me more, mm. and then the emotions, just put, if you're feeling a bit upset, put your emotions to the side, and just be present. So, have a look. Um, just touching on this, uh, fact, feeling, or perception. Um, if, if you're speaking facts, it's kind of logical. So, you know, the conversation could be around the facts. You can challenge the facts, you can clarify the facts, but facts are facts. Whereas feelings we need to acknowledge. And if feelings are, if feelings are come, come to the fore, again, talking facts or saying calm down, oh, let's talk about this logically, write a list, you know, do's and don'ts or benefits and costs and benefits. No, you know, you can't do that. You've got to actually acknowledge feelings. And then, of course, if it's perceptions, if, if our perceptions are so different, then um, get curious, assertively, is getting curious, and ask what and how questions, sort of putting it all together. And uh, ideally, you know, I think being flexible is synonymous with being assertive. And it's, um, I haven't touched on it today, but I have a model after success practical guide to getting on with others. And we, we do, you know, logic, action, fun and feeling, different modes for different situations. Uh, and it's the flexibility mm -hmm. to move around. But know, know your outcome. Coming back to the, to, to the nine at the start, again, know your outcome. Um, our only goes is a, a nice concept. So, you know, like, we know where, where we want to go, but, you know, be flexible. Things happen. We can change it. And, again, a cope with the unexpected. It's, again by aligning positively our mind, um, our emotions, our physiology, and what's missing? Whatever the other one <laughs> <laughs> You know the four. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so okay, so this is actually a slide I took from my sexual harassment um, uh, work. Um, seven processes. Ideally, we nip it in the bud. So unhelpful behavior, if you can address it at the start, it's just so much more helpful than it, because it, otherwise it escalates. So address immediately, have a process, and we've done some processes today that you could use. 
be very clear about the behavior you expect and that you want. So say it positively, not negatively. Support your team. It's top down often. I mean, it's also going to be bottom up, but basically the leader is the one who ideally will role model these very uh, positive behaviors. And ideally you work together to, to create the best culture that, that you can have. Um, so general questions. Um, yeah, so we've reached the two o'clock mark. So, so, do you want to do a quick summary? Yeah, let's do a quick yeah. summary, and then um, for those of you who do uh, want to stay on the line for some yeah. questions, feel free. For those of you who do have to leave, um, we would like to thank you for dedicating your lunch break in most states. I think it would be now. Um, and if you do need to exit, um, in order to receive the exit survey and also the materials from today, simply click on the exit icon on the top right hand corner of your screen and the one that says exit and that will take you to that satisfaction survey. Um, and thank you once again for joining. But we're just going to finish up here with the final um, bits and we'll go on with that. Thank you. And just to let you know about some public courses that are coming up that are, are really good. So I'm just going to uh, quickly nip back to the summary. So it, we, I've got 10, if you like, 10 top tips that kind of will summarize it all together. So um, everyone can benefit. Again, it's, it's that sort of mindset, that attitude of, you know, everybody can benefit. Get resourceful, so mentally, emotionally, physiologically, and through our language. Be respectful because that creates rapport. And rapport, if you want to get along or you want to be persuasive or influential, um, rapport is, is key. It's finding common ground and respect um, accelerates that. Separate the person from the behavior. Go for win-win outcomes. And again, we're looking at the mind and the emotions and physiology and language. So, so, so think it. You know, think it. Uh, feel it. Oh, wrong way. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Listen empathetically. Go to second position first and then go third position, which is up in the helicopter. Use I statements because they're clear, direct, and honest. Um, ref oh, we didn't touch on this, but this is so important. Reframe difficult to different. So if, it, if it's, um, so in a nutshell, the fast, fast, fast track version of this is, uh, okay, so, I'm, and you're not difficult, but just, just say, I wanted to call Just so everybody knows out there. <laughs> not, totally gorgeous, uh, and really wonderful. Um, but let's say, oh, actually, a third person is here, over here, and, you know, I'm thinking they're difficult. Well, first thing is, I'm sure not everybody thinks they're difficult, so that's the first thing. And then, you know what? If I can go second position, and look, they're different. Look, they're just different to me. They've just got another point of view. Their point of view is valid. If I come from that respectful position, I'm actually going to be able to have a more productive relationship with them. Mm -hmm. We've done nip it in the bud, and I like this. So practice to practice your practice. It really is. I mean, many of you, right at the beginning, you know, when we did the poll, so a lot of you have got the expertise, uh, but, you know, are you using it? Um, I mean, I, I teach a wonderful course, and have for 17 years with Sydney Uni, it's getting what you want, a third of skills and more. And we have a week in between the two days to, to practice. And the people who practice come back, and I mean, I've had people come back who've transformed their lives. It's like one beautiful woman who came, and as she walked in, her whole physiology was different, and I knew we were going to get the right story. But she, she had, um, had co assertive conversations with her husband, with her kids, with her stepkids, with her staff, you know, everybody, um, her tenants. Um, and just the results, she said, were just outstanding. You know, just she, she actually said, I've never been as happy in my life. Wow. Because she, she finally was able to speak up and state what was she needed. Mm -hmm. she, she was very timid, and she actually put this all together. So I, I help bullies uh, develop more empathy, and I help people who are timid um, be more assertive. Be more assertive, yeah. So... So those are two. Um, for those of you who are fairly advanced, that I do do a one day with Sydney Uni CCE and advanced um, skills, and there we've got the little QR code so you can just zip it, and it will take you. Isn't it wonderful? It will take you to their website, um, and also the Getting What You Want um, one. And 
Excellent. Great. Thank you once again um, on behalf of Redback Conferencing. Um, we're just going to go to, we've got two questions, sure. so we'll get to those quickly. Thanks oh, for everyone who yes. stayed online. Um, yes. So, Darren, how can you avoid using emotive language if you have a natural tendency to slip into this when being assertive? Is emotive language necessarily a bad thing? Ah, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, positive emotive language is is a passion and enthusiasm and that's a beautiful energy to um to project and in fact it, it's passion it's passion that persuades so in that sense um if we can up if we can up the the level of of our positive emotions um it will have an impact now of course the other the other way around is of course if you the more um extreme or negative that you are, you know, people just won't want to be around you, actually. Have you noticed that? You know, we tend to gravitate to people who, whose energy we like, who are more positive. And, and um, so I would say go for it if it's um, positive. Hmm. Excellent. Um, and also from Jane again, so if someone had a strong opinion on an area of work that overlapped with yours, what do you do or say to them if you do not agree with them? I think that sounds quite common. Oh, yes. Well, um, I actually, thank you, I get curious. I, I actually, I really do. Uh, it's, a, it's a mindset of curiosity. So I'm, I, I, I would perhaps say, um, you know, I have a different point of view to you. And, and I, see, using the and and the I, and I would like, I'd like you to to explain um, or talk to me about, you know, your thoughts or your point of view or your way of doing something. And, and, and then I'd listen. I'd listen. Ideally, totally respectfully. And, you know, I, I expect to learn something new every day, so I do. <laughs> so it's like I, in this conversation, then, I, there's, you know, I would actually approach it from that. Um, how can I learn something from this? Um, is this a different way to do something? Um, I'm very open to to finding a, a different way. Mm. Not always a better way, but often it could be a better way. Absolutely. I wonder if that answers the question. Great. Um, that's all the questions that have come through now. But um, once this is over, no doubt it will stew up in your mind and you may think of some over the next 24 or 48 hours. Um, feel free to contact us um, or you've got Yvonne's direct details there and I'm sure you should be willing to help you guys out. Um, any sort of questions that come up, perhaps there's certain situations within your organisations at the moment, um, either of us would definitely be um, keen to help. So I'll hand it back over to Yvonne to make her closing comments. Um, but thanks once again for joining uh, today's webinar and there's only two more Redback webinars left for the end of the year. So um, make sure you keep an eye out for those invitations. So back over to you Yvonne. Well, thank you all for being here. It's, it's wonderful. And um, I really do hope that you will um, implement, like immediately, because that's the secret, implement immediately the, the tips and the techniques. For many, it might have just been a refresher. But ask yourself, you know, and if we went back to the poll, not that we're going to, but just in your mind or on a piece of paper, if you implemented all of the things, there'd be at least, you know, four times three, there'd be at least 12, if not more, uh, techniques that you could use. I wonder how. Have you kaizen yourself? I really do hope so. And uh, absolutely, um, I'd love to see you on a course or a coaching or whatever. And uh, I wish you well, absolutely, you know, enjoy. Actually enjoy the, the results of your assertive conversation. Thank you.